And, and so one of the things that uh, was present in, in much of the nation's history was something called the McGuffey Eclectic Reader. Now, I think my grandmother had one of these. Has anybody ever read through these? Okay. Uh, the youngest people in the room have read one. <laughs> All right. And I saw a hand up over there. And so one of the things, a, a guy by the name of uh, Westerfall wrote a book, McGuffey and His Readers. And what he said was that um, God is portrayed as creator, preserver, and governor. Now, I want to spend just a moment on that word governor. I am not mechanically inclined whatsoever, but I think <clears throat> that when I uh, set my thermostat so that the heat kicks on in the winter and the air conditioner kicks on in the summer, there's this thing called a governor so that when the temperature in the house gets either below a certain point or above a certain point, the governor in the thermostat kicks in and tells the furnace to do its thing or the air conditioner to do its thing. And so in the same way, our conscious, if you're into Jiminy Cricket and uh, uh, Pinocchio or the Holy Spirit, if you're into the Bible, pricks our conscious, acts as a governor, and helps us to hopefully walk a steady path. And certainly uh, when uh, the uh, Bible stories were told in first and second grade before Ingram versus Vitale, which was the Supreme Court case that removed prayer in school, I remember the teacher coming and talking about that. I wasn't sure what she meant by the governor. I figured it out later on in life. But that's something that came along. Now, uh, there was a, a researcher by the name of Dr. Lincoln uh, Mullen with the uh, uh, George uh, uh, Washington University. And <clears throat> he got very intrigued because he saw this Bible verse just popping up in the newspapers of America in 1876. And he began to research it. I've downloaded his Excel spreadsheet. It's about 256 meg of all the Bible verses in the various newspapers in the country from, from the 1830s up until 1922 and, and the Bible verses uh, that were on all of them. And what got him going was a Bible verse, 1 Samuel 3, 4. And so what in the world was going on? And so he investigated and come to find out a Democrat by the name of Samuel Tilden was running for president of the United States. Interestingly enough, he was, his running mate was Thomas Hendricks, who at the time was the governor of Indiana. So how many of you have been to the state capitol building? So on the, on the lawn, on the southeast corner, you probably have seen the statue a hundred times, but don't know who the heck he is. That's uh, Thomas Hendricks, the running mate of Samuel Tilden, and Samuel Tilden lost out to Rutherford B. Hayes, the, the Republican, who basically went to four uh, southern states and said, listen, guys, if you uh, throw your votes to me in the Electoral College, because it went to the, uh, it basically, uh, it was a tie in the, elect in, in the he lost, the, the Republican lost the popular vote. Samuel Tilden won the, the popular vote. But Rutherford B. Hayes went to the, the southern states and said, listen, if you throw your votes to me, I will end Reconstruction. So the Southern Democrats said, we'll go with the Republican, and, and Hay, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes ended Reconstruction. So Samuel Tilden lost out. But <clears throat> 1 Samuel 3, 4, uh, the Lord uh, said to Samuel, come, and, and Samuel said, here am I. Now think about this. A Bible verse, sort of like the way we would use a bumper sticker in 1876. Now, if you tried that in 2018, I doubt that more than one in a hundred people would know anything about the scripture verse. But in 1876, that was common knowledge. And so uh, what Lincoln Mullen figured out was that people were reading uh, in, in early life as children, the McGuffey readers, but then in the newspapers, sermons, Word, crossword puzzles, everything was based on the Bible. So even as adults, we were inculcating that sense of, of morality into our lives. And so uh, in his uh, Gettysburg Address, when Lincoln says, this nation shall, uh, under God shall know a new birth of freedom, um, Lincoln was seeing something in the American culture. A pastor, uh, George Dougherty, in 1954, gave the uh, sermon titled Under God on the 150th anniversary of the birthday of Abraham Lincoln. It was that sermon that led to the words under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. In my Bill Clinton, You're No John F. Kennedy, I have that complete sermon, and I actually spoke with Dr. Dougherty back in 1993 to get his permission to include his sermon in my book. And so Dougherty said that under God uh, are the definitive words that define the character of the American way of life. 
or at least it did back in the 1860s. But something happened. 